The inspiration for the performance art painting you are about to witness began on February 22nd, 1732. For on that Friday at Bridges Creek in Westmoreland County, Virginia, the second son from the second marriage of a colonial plantation owner was born. For Mary, the child's mother, he would be the first of her six children. Not much is known about this young boy's childhood. As the years have passed by, many have heard the story of how he took a hatchet and cut down a cherry tree, then admitted his deed because his honest character would not allow him to lie. This tale, intended to display the boy's integrity, was probably invented by Mason Locke Weems, author of the biography of George Washington that appeared in 1800, the year after the founding father's death. A generation later, the statesman Daniel Webster concluded that America has furnished to the world the character of Washington. And if our American institutions had done nothing else, that alone would have entitled them to the respect of mankind. If nothing else, George Washington was a man of high character and integrity. His commitment to his principles on the battlefield and in the presidency, sometimes against political and popular resistance, helped him earn respect for himself and for the nation. George Washington was a deeply patriotic man of faith and prayer. A series of morning and evening prayers from his journal give us a glimpse into his heart. Consider the following morning prayer. O eternal and everlasting God, I presume to present myself this morning before thy divine majesty beseeching thee to accept of my humble and hearty thanks that it hath pleased thy great goodness to keep and preserve me the night past from all the dangers poor mortals are subject to, and has given me sweet and pleasant sleep, whereby I find my body refreshed and comforted for performing the duties of this day, in which I beseech thee to defend me from all perils of body and soul. Direct my thoughts, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb, and purge my heart by thy Holy Spirit from the dross of my natural corruption, that I may with more freedom of mind and liberty of will serve thee, the everlasting God, in righteousness and holiness this day and all the days of my life. Increase my faith in the sweet promises of the gospel. Give me repentance from dead works. Pardon my wanderings and direct my thoughts unto thyself, the God of my salvation. Teach me how to live in thy fear, labor in thy service, and ever run in the ways of thy commandments. Make me always watchful over my heart that neither the terrors of conscience, the loathing of holy duties, the love of sin, nor an unwillingness to depart this life may cast me into a spiritual slumber, but daily frame me more and more into the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that living in thy fear and dying in thy favor, I may in thy appointed time attain the resurrection of the just unto eternal life. Bless my family, friends, and kindred, Unite us all in praising and glorifying Thee in all our works begun, continued, and ended. When we shall come to make our last account before Thee, blessed Savior, who hath taught us thus to pray, our Father.
Now consider the following evening prayer taken from Washington's journal. Most gracious Lord God, from whom proceedeth every good and perfect gift, I offer to thy divine majesty my unfeigned praise and thanksgiving for all thy mercies towards me. Thou madest me at first and hast ever since sustained the work of thy own hand. Thou gavest thy son to die for me and hast given me assurance of salvation upon my repentance and sincerely endeavoring to conform my life to his holy precepts and example. Thou art pleased to lengthen out to me the time of repentance and to move me to it by thy spirit and by the word, by thy mercies and by thy judgments, out of a deepness of thy mercies, and by my own unworthiness I do appear before thee at this time. I have sinned and done very wickedly. Be merciful to me, O God, and pardon me for Jesus Christ's sake. Instruct me in the particulars of my duty, and suffer me not to be tempted above what thou givest me strength to bear. Take care, I pray thee, of my affairs, and more and more direct me in thy truth. Defend me from my enemies, especially my spiritual ones. Suffer me not to be drawn from thee by the blandishments of the world, carnal desires, the cunning of the devil, or deceitfulness of sin. Work in me thy good will and pleasure, and discharge my mind of all things that are displeasing to thee, of all ill will and discontent, wrath and bitterness, pride and vain conceit of myself, and render me charitable, pure, holy, patient, and heavenly minded. Be with me at the hour of death, dispose me for it, and deliver me from the slavish fear of it, and make me willing and fit to die whenever thou shalt call me hence. Bless our rulers in church and state. Bless, O Lord, the whole race of mankind. Let the world be filled with the knowledge of thee and thy Son, Jesus Christ. Pity the sick, the poor, the weak, the needy, the widows and fatherless, and all that mourn or are broken in heart, and be merciful to them according to their several necessities. Bless my friends, and grant me grace to forgive my enemies as heartily as I desire forgiveness of thee, my heavenly Father. I beseech thee to defend me this night from all evil, and do more for me than I can think or ask, for Jesus Christ's sake, in whose most holy name and words I continue to pray, our Father. Truly the Father of our country loved his God, his fellow man, and all that defined America. See to 
on this occasion of the National Day of Prayer, celebrating our religious liberties, please feel free to lift your voice, honoring America as we all sing this last chorus together. On Thursday, April 30th, 1789, during his inauguration on the balcony of Federal Hall in New York, George Washington took the oath of office to become the first President of the United States. According to the Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, the oath reads, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. After the oath, Washington added four simple words, which reflected the heart and faith of the Father of our country. These words were not necessarily spoken for the ears of man, but for the ears of God. His short, devout, sincere petition has set a precedent that presidents have embraced over the years. His prayer is one we should each return to daily. It is a prayer that can bring direction and healing to our land. Together, let us unite and individually pray. So help me God. 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 I do solemnly swear. So help me God. I will faithfully execute. So help me God. The office of President of the United States. So help me God and will, to the best of my ability, so help me God, will protect and defend, so help me God, the Constitution of the United States, so help me God.